It's May of 2021, and in a few weeks, the world will celebrate the 20th anniversary of the release of the very first Fast and Furious movie in the whole franchise. Now, much has happened to the cast over the last 20 years, and the same can be said for the cars we saw in the first movie. In another video I did a while back, I talk about how most of the cars from the first movie were reconditioned and then reused for change for their appearance in Too Fast and Furious. In the years that followed Too Fast and Furious, some of these cars were sold to automotive museums in the U.S., some were sold to private collectors, and others were sold to ravenous fans from all over the world. And others have just disappeared, presumably holed up in various private collections. But one of the most important cars of the first movie, and arguably of the whole franchise, is set to go to the Barrett-Jackson auction in Las Vegas on June 17th to June 19th. Can you guess which one it is? Confession, I hate cleaning my own cars. That's why I love Adams polishes. Whatever you want to clean, polish, or shine, Adams has a specific product just for that, even for matte finishes. Since 2000, Adams polishes has been offering premium car care products dedicated to the enthusiast. Whether you're a professional detailer or a weekend warrior, their innovative and effective products will enable you to achieve amazing results on your prized possession. Adams, made with pride and passion in the USA. If you guessed the orange Supra, you guessed correctly, but to be clear, we have to talk about which orange Supra. You have to remember that when car movies are made, for every one car that you see on screen, there are several clones of that car that serve as backups. Clones are needed as backups for stunts, special effects, process cars, and others are used for close-ups or interior shots. In total, in the first movie, eight Supras were used to make that movie. <laughs> Some were used for stunts, some were used for process car, and one was even a completely total bashed in wreck that we saw on the back of a tow truck. And in the first movie, as you probably remember, my personal Supra served as the main car and it was designated the Hero One or Principal One, which means the same thing. The Hero One car is the car that the actor would sit in, drive up in, drive away in, and so forth. It was the prettiest and shiniest amongst all the cars that are sitting there, right? There was a backup of the Hero One car, dubbed the Hero Two, in case the Hero One car got damaged. And after the first movie, most of the cars sat in storage. The cars that were rented to Universal by people like me, like my Supra and my Maxima, for example, were returned to their owners and the rest sat in storage. I sold my Supra about a year after the movie and that car remains in a private collection in the Netherlands over in Europe. For Too Fast, Too Furious, whatever cars we had left over from the first movie were then going to be repurposed and reused in Too Fast, Too Furious, including the leftover Supras, and including this Supra, which is now up for auction. In fact, Several cars left over eventually went to auction over the years after Too Fast to Furious was done with those cars. One of the stunt Supras from that batch at one point fell into the hands of a collector by the name of Mark Anton. Mark also currently owns the only existing Nissan Maxima from the first movie because there was only one car used and that was, that was a car that I rented to Universal. But in 2015, Mark's Supra went up to auction. Mark's car being a stunt car had very little in the way of screen used, interior pieces and so forth only because stunt cars are typically modified only to a point and really there's no reason to install all of the goodies and gauges in the interior of a stunt car if it's just going to get thrashed in the film. All that aside, exterior wise, Mark Super was actually a pretty good clone of the Hero One car and that car sold for $185,000 at auction including buyer's fees. The timing of that sale was somewhat interesting given that Paul Walker, the star of the first movie, had passed away just two years earlier back in 2013. And so the sale was kind of a barometer of Paul's star power and the true popularity of the Fast franchise, some would say. Here in 2021, six years have now passed since the last movie Super was sold. Everybody's watching this one. So which of the surviving Supers is going up for sale now? This car, which was designated as Brian's stunt one in the first movie, and it was used for interior shots, exterior shots, and, and exterior shots of stunts. This is the car. The last four digits of the VIN are 9030. On the key car list, this was car number nine in the first movie, and it was car number 22 in Too Fast, Too Furious. Its movie history looks something like this. The car was originally purchased for use in the first Fast and Furious in spring of 2000. We acquired the car from a seller in Arizona, and if you look closely, you can see the remnants of a Superstore decal on the radiator fan shroud. And anybody who knows anything about Superstore knows that Superstore was owned and operated in the state of Arizona, okay? That adds up. My boss, David Martyr, bought the car that we then dispatched my good friend, a guy by the name of Aaron Keller, who flew over to Arizona and just drove the car home like it was just a regular car. 
A little fun piece of useless trivia, Aaron's arm was shown in this scene. For all the work that he did for us, he got a five second thing on screen. The car was a black 1994 model. It had a factory aero top. Uh, we paid $24,000 for this car, which actually made it the most expensive of all, of all of the eight supers that we had to buy to make that movie. It was a factory twin turbo. This factory twin turbo setup was bone stock and the car had no other engine modification except maybe an exhaust, as I recall. The car used a factory Toyota four-speed automatic transmission, so it wasn't a V166 speed. So still, these cars are going up in value. And if memory serves me correctly, I think the car had around 55 to 62,000 miles. The car ran well the last time I saw it, which was after Too Fast to Furious. And of course, stunt cars usually has a, have a rough life, but this wasn't one of them. In the first movie, most of the stunts were just flybys, hard cornering, and the usual moderate speed, e-brake, U-turns kind of thing. Although this car was a stunt car, it was actually driven by Paul Walker in the first movie. Let me explain. There is a scene where Paul is chasing Johnny Tran and he slides to a stop and kind of an e-brake slide. He sticks his arm out the window and fires off a few rounds at Johnny Tran. Paul was actually behind the wheel at that particular time. How do I know this? I was literally standing 20 feet away from the action that day and I snapped several pictures as you can see here. So what you have here is the second best super from the entire series. One with significant provenance, a car that Paul Walker actually drove in the first film's climatic final scene. Things get a little more interesting when this car was repurposed for use in the second Fast and Furious movie. As I said a little while ago, most of the leftover cars from the first movie were shipped to Florida to be reused for the second movie. This car was one of them. Once we got the car to Florida, it got a complete makeover, including a TRD style wide body kit, different wheels, and a completely new interior look. And I mean really different interior look. The door panels and seats were completely reupholstered and all of the glit and all of the gritty black face gauges left over from the first movie were ripped out and replaced with white face gauges, like including the boost gauge, oil pressure gauge, and so on, all replaced with white face gauges. Even the instrument cluster was changed. The gauges received the white face dials courtesy of a fellow by the name of Pierre over at Auto Indulgence. So it'll be interesting to see when I see the car if they still have those gauges. And for Too Fast, Too Furious, all of the Supras received custom audio video systems and custom design roll cages. From the pictures though, on the Barrett Jackson's website, it, it looks like all of the audio equipment was removed from the car, which kind of makes sense if they were trying to restore it back to their look of the original movie. Frankly, it's kind of academic because the electronic boxes, like the turbo timers and all that stuff, and the audio video systems didn't actually function in the stunt cars because they didn't need to. They would light up, you know, you turn the key on, like they would light up like it was supposed to, but anything beyond that is just a waste of time. So again, restoring this car to its original movie appearance for the, from the first film would have meant that all of that stuff would have had to go anyway. This car for Too Fast, Too Furious was assigned to the second unit, which means it would have been used by the stunt team. Second unit is the stunt team. First unit is the team that works with the actors. To be more specific, this car was used during the famous opening street race. It was at the time equipped with propane tanks and an ignition apparatus so that it could shoot flames out of the tailpipe. So basically, audiences would have seen this car from a low angle as they were sitting on the starting line and shooting flame out. And then they would see the car again as it's flying by and spitting out flame during that memorable street race sequence. And then of course, after Too Fast, Too Furious wrap, this car came back to Southern California and sat in storage at Ted Moser's Picture Car Warehouse in the LA area. At some point, this car also made an appearance in Grandma's Boy. They called up and said, hey, we need a rice rocket. And Ted said, I got a rice rocket. And they sent him the car. And again, after that, at some point, the car was sold and the trail went cold for a long time. Frankly, I hadn't heard much about the car since 2005. So I'm guessing it was likely in a private collection, but somewhere along the line, someone must have restored it. The restoration must have been done many years ago. And I say that because those wheels have been discontinued for a long time. So finding screen accurate parts in 2015 would have been next to impossible. Doing it back in 2005 would have been much easier. So. While the restoration looks pretty good from the pictures, the interior is a bit off. It's missing a couple of things. A couple of things were done wrong. It has the wrong seats, for example, the wrong steering wheel, the wrong stereo, and I can go on a little bit, but I won't. If I were nitpicking, the rear wing end plates are also inaccurate. The, the wheel offsets look wrong. You know, minor things to be sure and easily fixable. But nevertheless, it has many of the super rear parts necessary to make it historically accurate. It's kind of a blend between what they saw in the first movie and the second movie. But it's a fine example of an accurate, well cared for and high de highly desirable movie car. 
Why it hasn't surfaced in recent years is a mystery I hope we can re resolve as the car rolls across the auction block. So what will it sell for? Well, that's the $25,000 question, isn't it? Since this is a no reserve auction, we will know definitely what it was worth when the hammer drops because it's selling no matter what the price. There's gonna be a lot of eyes on this auction. Everybody's gonna be watching, including current owners of Fast and Furious movie cars and probably even replica builders. Why? Because this is the first significant Fast and Furious movie car to go on sale in recent memory. And given the fact that the current Fast and Furious movies are not really car movies anymore, and the fact that Paul Walker is no longer with us, the selling price will kind of be an important measure of both Paul's popularity and the franchise's importance in the pantheon of American pop culture. What do I think it will sell for? Well, given the $185,000 sale of Mark Super in 2015, and given that the fact that Paul is no longer with us, if you want a car that he actually drove, there were only so many options. And to narrow it down further, there's only one other original Paul Walker driven Super left over from the first movie, and that car is sitting in a private collection in the Netherlands, and he's not selling. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. But if I had to guess, I would say I would be shocked if it sold for a penny less than $550,000. And frankly, there's a discussion amongst many collectors that the car could hit seven figures. And we also speculate that the buyer will be an overseas buyer. I say this because car museums in this country don't have the stomach for the cars that, that are this expensive. But honestly, no matter who ends up with this car, I'm sure they're gonna take great pride in owning one of the most iconic movie cars of the last 20 years. That's gonna be it for this episode, everybody. But if you find my content interesting, I'd appreciate it if you would take a moment to subscribe below. You should also check out my video description for important links to my special coupon offers from some of my sponsors. Adams, for example, gives you 20% off. Check it out. You can also check out my merchandise store right below the video. And until next time, keep living the fast life. That's gonna be it, we'll see you next time.